Okay, this is lesson uh, three in chapter seven. We are learning our second method for solving linear systems today. So the first method that we learned was in the last lesson was graphing. And today we're gonna be learning an algebraic method, which means we're not gonna have a graph or a visual. Um, and this method is called substitution. So it's the word kind of describes what it is. We're gonna be substituting one value or one expression out for another. Okay, so I have three examples. The first one's easiest, second one's kind of a medium level, and the third one is a harder level. Let's go ahead and go through. Okay, and I do have an example here and then the verify step on the right. Um, okay, let's go ahead. So example one, we have two equations. The first one is y equals two x plus one, and the second one is x plus three y equals 17. Now, what we're gonna notice for substitution is typically you wanna use this when one of the equations is set up so that we have one of the variables being equal to some expression, okay? So here we have y equals two x plus one. So what I can do is take out or substitute the y in the second equation for two x plus one, since y should be equal to two x plus one. So I'm going to take out this y, I'm going to substitute it out and put what it's equal to. So let's see how that looks. So I'm going to sub in, sub, I'm going to use the word sub for substitution sometimes, uh, sub in 2x plus 1 for y in equation 2. Okay, so let's see how that looks. So instead of a y being here, I'm gonna sub it out and put two x plus one. When you make a substitution, you should use brackets because that three is being multiplied to that entire expression. So I took out the y, I put two x plus one since they're equal according to equation one. Okay, I'm gonna erase some of this. Okay, so we did that now. And now we're gonna solve this equation. This equation has one variable now. So we're gonna expand and isolate x on one side. I'm gonna write that, expand and isolate x. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is expand the three into the bracket there. So I get x plus six x plus three equals 17. Next thing I'm gonna do is collect my like terms. I have two x terms there, so that would be seven x plus three equals 17. And now I'm gonna solve using opposite operations. So first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of the adding three by subtracting three, the opposite cancels it out on that side. So I have seven X equals 14. And then because the seven and the X are being multiplied, we do the opposite, which is dividing. It cancels the seven out. And I'm finally left with my answer, which is X equals two. So I've got my solution. I have X equals two. Now I'm gonna make some space over here. We still need to figure out what y is though, and you can use either equation to do this, but I'm gonna use the yellow equation. So I'm gonna sub in x equals two into equation one, just cause it looks a little bit easier to use equation one. So let's take out the x and put in two, because that's what we think the solution is. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing there. I'm gonna take out the x in the equation and put in two, as you can see, I've highlighted in green and it just answer it. So this would be four plus one, y equals five. So our final solution is x equals two, y equals five. Really nice if you can write that at the end and box in your answer because you will have a lot of steps to these questions and when, for the reader who's looking at your work, um, it's really nice to box in your final answer so that they can find the solutions easily, okay? Uh, to verify, I'm only going to verify on this first equation. You could verify separately on the, on the other ones on your own. You want to use the original equations to verify your solutions. Okay, so I'm going to highlight these two. So let's write down the two. So equation one, we had y equals 2x plus 1. We're gonna take out the x, we're gonna put two, we're gonna take out the y and put five, and just make sure that this makes sense. It's two times two plus one, so we get five equals five. Makes sense, so again, I took out the 
y and put the solution, took out the x, put the solution, and just made sure the equation makes sense. Let's do equation two. So I'm gonna replace the x with a two and the y with a five. So again, here was where the x was before in the equation. Here is where the y was. Now let's just make sure this equation makes sense. Two plus 15 equals 17. Yep, two plus 15 is 17. We've verified that it's true. Okay, let's go ahead and do a harder question. So this equation was a little bit easier to solve using substitution because it was already set up to substitute the y out and replace it with 2x plus 1. And the next one, it's not set up nicely for us. So we're first going to need to do some rearranging. So let's look at what we have to do here. Okay, so let's look at this equation. Now, what we want to do is first rearrange this. By rearrange, I just mean move the terms to different sides so that I can substitute the y out of this. Um, so what I'm going to do is move the y to the other side of the equation and move the 25 over. So this looks like this. When you move a term to the other side, it just changes signs. You're just adding and subtracting it. So it looks like this. 3x minus 25 equals y. I moved the y over. I switched places essentially with the 25 and the y. Okay, so now we're going to replace the y with 3x minus 25. So I'm going to sub out y and replace with 3x minus 25. Okay, so let's do that in equation two. So I'm going to take out where I have the yellow there, the y. Since it's equal to 3x minus 25, I'm going to take it out and put 3x minus 25. The reason we do that is because now I will only have x's in my equations. I have no longer have any y's and I can solve it. Okay, now we're going to expand and solve. Okay, so we have 2x minus, and here we're going to expand the 5 in. It's important you put brackets around when you replace or substitute because that 5 does need to apply to both. So we'll have negative 15x, and here we have a negative 5 times a negative 25, so we'll have positive 125 equals negative 5. Okay, let's combine those like terms here. That would be negative 13x plus 125 equals negative 5. We're going to subtract 125, do the opposite operation so that it gets cancelled out. And we're one step closer to isolating for x. And we divide by negative 13. That cancels out the negative 13. And finally, I have my solution, x equals 10. Okay, let's go ahead and sub in. Now you can use either equation. I will just use this one, 3x minus 25 equals y, the original, the first equation. And I'm going to sub out the 10 x for a 10 in that equation to solve it because we've already found that x is equal to 10. So I'm going to 3 times 10 minus 25 equals y. So again, I took out the x, I put a 10 because we think that x equals 10. 30 minus 25 equals y, 5 equals y. So there our final answer or final solution is x equals 10 y equals 5. You should always write your final answer at the bottom and box it in so it's nice and easy for the reader to find it. Um, I'm going to skip the verifying step here, but you could stop and pause this video and plug them into yourself, in for yourself to see. What I recommend is that you, when you verify, you should verify with the original two equations, not the rearranged equations because you could have made a mistake in rearranging. Um, so verify using the original equations, please. Okay, the last and hardest example, we have some equations with fractions. Now, we should never be dealing with fractions if we can avoid it. So there's a little trick if you have some fractions. What you want to do is you want to multiply both sides of the equation by something that is going to cancel those fractions out. In math, we have this golden rule with equations. If you do something to one side of the equation and the same thing to the other side, you're not changing the equation at all. So here, if we take advantage of that golden rule, and we multiply it by 2, 
everything on the right hand side by 2 and everything on the left hand side by 2. We're not changing the answer to the equation but we are modifying it so that it doesn't have any fractions anymore which is nice. So it'll look like this 2 times oops times y over 2 equals 2 times 2x minus 3 over 2 times 2. So we have a 2 multiplied to every single term. Okay, so for those fractions, they will nicely cancel out those 2s. And then for that other term, it's just going to be double what it was before. So we're going to have y equals 4x minus 3. That looks much nicer than it did originally. We're going to use the same trick over here. We're going to multiply everything by 2. So I'm going to have uh, 2 times x over 2 equals negative, oops, sorry, not equals, minus 4y times 2. Everything gets multiplied by 2 equals 12 times 2. So every single term gets multiplied by a pink 2 there, and the fraction gets cancelled out. That's why you want to choose 2, because that was what was in the denominator, and that's what's going to cancel out that fraction. If you have multiple different fractions with different denominators, you would want to choose a number that cancels all of them out. So here we'll end up with x equals, oh my goodness, x minus 8y equals 24. Okay, now we can start with our substitution. These are the two equations I'm going to be working with um, right here. But if you do verify this, you would want to verify in the original equations, okay? Okay, so here um, I'm going to sub out the y in the second equation for 4x minus 3 since they're equal to each other. So we'll have, so sub out y for 4x minus 3, since they're equal. Okay, so x minus 8, and then you always use brackets when you do substitution, because that 8 needs to multiply to all of that, equals 24. So same equation, I've just taken out the y and put 4x minus 3. Now I'm going to expand and solve. I'm going to write down less here since this is our third time through it. So we'd have minus 32x positive 24 equals 24. I can collect like terms here. So I get minus 31x plus 24 equals 24. I subtract 24 from both sides and then divide by negative 31. And I find that x equals 0, actually, because 0 divided by anything is 0. Now we finally want to substitute that answer. And then I can use either equation. I'm going to use the first one, y equals 4. And I'm going to replace the x with a 0. And so I get y equals 0 minus 3, or y equals negative 3. So my final solution is x equals 0, y equals negative 3. And that would be kind of the hardest level of question. If you're given some fractions, you do need to modify the equation first and then solve.